Hi, it's Dr. Ann Zink. I'm providing a brief update this week on where we're at with COVID. It's December 31st. Happy New Year's, everyone. It's been quite the 2020, and I think we're all looking forward to 2021 and wanted to just provide a brief update of where we're at. So looking at our cases overall, again, you can see our onset date graph continues to show a downward trend, which has been fantastic to see. Our percent positivity is just hovering underneath that 5% at 4.82. And our total occupied beds have also been going down uh, from the number of people with COVID. So about uh, just under 10%, 9.6% right now. I will tell you that there have been a series of tests that have just come back from the YK region that have been positive. These span over about a month's time and we just did get a large report number in from them. All those people have been contacted and the YK is doing their own contact tracing. And so there was really no delay in care, but there was a delay in reporting back to our cases. And so over the next week, you'll be seeing those enter into the dashboard. Again, that onset date takes into account some of these backlogs that we can sometimes see. More than anything, I just want to stop and pause at the end of 2020 and remember those that we have lost. This has been a hard year for so many economically, socially, financially, um, but then we've had, unfortunately, Alaskans get really sick and we have lost Alaskans uh, to many diseases, uh, but also really the surge of COVID-19. We've had just over 200 deaths uh, in the state and um, want to stop and pause and remember each of them as we're moving forward. When we look at who has died, we continue to see that those who are older have really taken the brunt of this. Uh, so here is a graph looking at the number of cases per age. So we really see a lot of cases between that 20 to 40 year old group. Uh, but unfortunately really about that 50 to 60 year olds and then and really starting to spike up by 60 and then above up to 80, uh, we see an increased number of deaths uh, the older someone is uh, in the state. Doesn't mean it's a life sentence. We see older people get well all the time as well. And we see younger people uh, who get sick. And unfortunately we've lost people anywhere from uh, in their twenties to their nineties. Uh, but clearly the older someone is, the, the greater the burden of disease. And that gets us a little bit to vaccination and where we're at. Uh, so we are still in this very limited availability. Uh, we're working on scheduling and getting providers in the outpatient setting vaccinated here recently. We had our website opened yesterday for being able to schedule appointments and appreciate all the outpatient healthcare providers' uh, engagement with that. We'll continue to put up additional appointments as soon as they're available with additional vaccine. Uh, currently, we have about 13,000 people who have received vaccine and it's been reported back into us, 13,271. That was of December 28th, um, but we continue to update those numbers regularly and are really trying to escalate this, uh, the speed of getting vaccines in arms. It doesn't do much on the shelf. Uh, it does a lot in someone's arms. And so there's a lot of logistics to that, uh, but that is by far our team's 100% focus right now is trying to make sure that vaccines that we get in the state are delivered as quickly as possible. We have had a lot of amazing partnership with our, our rural communities, urban communities. Uh, many of the rural communities have also gotten an IHS allocation, and so they've been able to reach additional populations uh, quickly, but some great pictures coming in. I just really want to pause and thank them for their incredible partnership. So where are we at with vaccines? I get this question all the time, and when are we going to get the next one? So as mentioned before, there's kind of these federal recommendations and the state looks at the state data and then takes that into account. We, as mentioned, are doing a phase uh, 1A and we had broken down into three tiers, tier one, tier two, and tier three. And today we're publishing what looks like phase 1B that will consist of four separate phases. And it really takes into account a few things about Alaska, including uh, our elders, our seniors, uh, those who are living in nursing homes and not, we're already vaccinating those in long-term care facilities, but we have a lot of older people who don't live in long-term care facilities, but are very vulnerable and taken into consideration that age as well as other congregate settings. So I uh, encourage you all to take a look at our website uh, on those additional phases. I just wanted to emphasize again, our kind of guiding principles when we're doing this. So we're looking at the science. How do we really maximize uh, the benefit of the vaccine while minimizing any potential harm? It's for the reason uh, that adults are being vaccinated instead of kids right now. We uh, see that kids are very minimally impacted by COVID-19, um, but older adults really are highly impacted. And that's why they weren't studied in children yet. Um, so we're looking forward to those studies, but right now really trying to maximize that benefit to older adults. Preventing both morbidity and mortality, so hospitalizations, illness, as well as death, as well as the importance of preser preserving societal function. We see more people die when our hospitals become overwhelmed from heart attacks and strokes and other things. So making sure our healthcare systems and other societal functions uh, are intact that could cause additional morbidity and mortality outside of COVID. We want to make sure it's implementable, that's feasible to do, and that it really uh, respects uh, both community and individual values. And while that's challenging, it's uh, definitely a goal that we take very seriously. 
And then ethics, you know, really trying to make sure that all Alaskans uh, have the chance for equal outcomes and ensuring uh, that we've got transparency in the process and promoting education uh, across the board. So uh, there, this is not a, a value judgment on who's important and who's less important. It's really trying to maximize the benefit of this vaccine as quickly as possible and getting it out. We really appreciate all the tremendous public comment we've gotten. We've gotten over 380 public comments, uh, had uh, numerous oral testimonies, and we will continue uh, to listen and to get feedback and to change uh, based on that feedback, as well as making sure that we're looking at the data and science to encourage people to take a look at 1B. So what to expect uh, if you it's, it's your turn uh, to get the vaccine. Uh, there will be a questionnaire uh, about um, you being able to get vaccinated, making sure that you meet the criteria. You should plan on expecting to wait at least 15 minutes after your vaccine to make sure there's no adverse reaction. Uh, you will get a vaccine card where you can they will record your vaccine number on it and you'll get a sticker reminding you of the second dose. And we really encourage you to sign up for VSAFE at the same time. And that's a program that helps the CDC look for any sort of side effects. It's super easy. You just get a text every day and ask you how you're doing, how you feel, uh, and really encouraging all Alaskans who get vaccinated uh, to go ahead and sign up. We're getting a lot of questions about what's in the vaccine. And so just wanted to share a couple details. Uh, both of these vaccines, the Moderna and Pfizer, uh, don't contain any fetal material, don't contain DNA, don't contain antibiotics, don't contain eggs, don't include any pork or blood products, no microchips. Um, really, there's not much in there except for this what's messenger RNA, which is a series of proteins surrounded by a little fatty structure that holds it together and some salt and sugar in the solution uh, to kind of buffer it to make sure that it's stable. So there's no additives, there's no preservatives. Uh, there were no cell lines at all used to develop this. Um, so I just want to make sure Alaskans are informed of what's in there. Uh, the fatty cell structure around each one, excuse me, the fatty structure that su surrounds the mRNA on each one is slightly different. Uh, and that's the difference between the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. And those specifics are listed on both our website and the CDC website. Another question we've been getting a lot is how about this UK variant and what does this mean? Um, I like to think of the spike protein as kind of like a tree. It's this kind of a complex uh, structure that sticks off of the coronavirus itself. And what it looks like has happened in the UK variant is one of those branches, one of the little parts of the spike has changed in its sequence. And we see this happen with viruses. Um, because the vaccine is really designated to the whole tree and not just each individual branch, the thought is this vaccine should still work very well against this virus. However, it does look like this UK variant spreads more quickly um, than other uh, the variations of this. And we've had other changes in this virus before, but this one uh, looks to be a fairly significant change that way. It doesn't look like it makes people sicker, but the concern when something spreads faster is you just need more people vaccinated and it's harder to control. You just have more people need to be masking and distancing. And it's for that reason that the CDC has now required a test uh, if you're traveling from the UK prior to boarding. And we, again, are highly encouraging anyone who's traveled from the YK or anywhere else to get tested that five days or greater after travel as well. We've already identified uh, this specific strain down in Colorado. We know it's in Canada. And the more we can slow the entrance of this strain uh, in our state, as well as the movement, the better off we'll be able to protect each other. So making sure you're doing all those important mitigation steps and really trying to get not only the test prior to travel, but also the test after travel to make sure that you identify if you happen to be asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic with the disease. Another comment about the vaccines is uh, like I've talked about before, it feels a lot like the sun. It's uh, we've passed the winter solstice, we're getting vaccine out, sun's getting a little bit longer, but we know that January and February can be hard months in the state. It can be cold, winter still feels like it's coming. And I think these next couple months could be hard as we're trying to get vaccine out, but don't have it widely available as of yet and have the risk of having more cases spreading. So the more that we as Alaskans do to work together uh, to keep distanced and hand washing, really encouraging businesses to look at the asymptomatic uh, uh, testing guidelines from the CDC and consider your business getting tested. Everyone from uh, schools uh, to uh, grocery store workers to restaurants, uh, having a way to regularly ask your employees to get tested to make sure you're identifying cases early. That will help make sure that you don't have it spread within a workplace and having more people require quarantine and isolation and be able to keep your business open and healthy and active uh, as we move into this next year as we're all pushing those cases down. So more than anything, uh, happy 2021 and New Year's. And I look forward to working together uh, in 2021. Looking forward to a very different year in this upcoming year. So be well, be safe, be kind, uh, enjoy the new year. Uh, reflect on all the ways that Alaska has been amazingly strong and resilient. We appreciate your partnership and we will talk to you next year. Thank you.